uh, I'd like to begin by talking about the historicity of Job. People have questioned that. Uh, and a lot of it is because uh, Job is poetry. And they would ask the question, how can you have these guys sitting around here singing songs to each other? You know, making all this poetry. How do they do it off the top of their heads? Um, the problem I have with that is that with Ezekiel, God identified Job along with Noah and Daniel as the three men who he would spare in the country if they were alive at the time. And of course, then he says, but I wouldn't even spare their kids. <laughs> and they themselves couldn't stop the judgment. So Job is identified by God as a historical person who God respected and, and considered one of his top three human beings. You know, if you were to ask God, you know, who were your top three guys? You know, David had his three mighty men, his top three out of his 30, 33 mighty men. Well, God's top three appears to be uh, Job, Noah, and Daniel. So Job is no slouch. Uh, James considered him as historical. So inspired scripture sees Job as a historical person. And I think he is. I think what he went through is, is true. Now, under divine inspiration, the background scenes are given, but uh, that, you know, except for when he lived, you know, it would be possible to find archaeological evidence. You know, maybe someday we'll find something of Job's with his name on it or whatever. Now, uh, why was the book of Job written? Well, I think it's a theodicy. Well, what a theodicy is, is an attempt to explain why the righteous suffer. That's what a theodicy is. That's the technical term for it. And um, uh, a theodicy is a part of wisdom literature where you, you tackle the problem. You know, why do good people die? Why do bad people live? You know, why was this person spared? You know, why? You know, how can a loving God allow this evil to occur to a good person? You know, that struggle of, of, of that question. And Job, under God's inspiration, addresses that. Now, Job most likely lived uh, during the time of Abraham, or maybe earlier. And the reason we say that is because the things that are referred to in Job, and the place where he lived, and all this kind of stuff, seems to fit a, a uh, uh, I guess, early, you think early Bronze Age, late Stone Age time period around 2000 B.C. It just seems to fit the culture and the world at that time. Uh, so very likely Job's story was recorded well before Genesis was written. You know, long before Moses was on the scene, hundreds of years before Moses. Uh, and so it's very likely that it made its way into the Hebrew scriptures via Abraham and Moses or something like that. That it may have been amongst tablets that they had the story recorded or something, or, or carried on through oral tradition, where they would memorize it and recite it. And again, you know, some people try to argue well, oral tradition things change, but actually they they found in studies that oral traditions tend to be less changing than written traditions. Mm -hmm. That they always memorize it and get it right, and uh, and that it it could be carried on from generation to generation without being altered. Is it possible this could have been something that was provided to, say, Moses um, through maybe the, his father-in-law, Christ Yeah, that's right. Uh, it, it could have been something that was in that family record. Uh, or it was something they, that, that, that they picked up from the area of Edom because Job's location is, is, was, was Edom, became Edom in later years. But the, uh, the place where he lived was in biblical Edom. Well, although he wouldn't be considered an Edomite. The Edomites came much much later than him. He's before the Edomites and probably before the Syrites that that uh, Esau and his descendants killed off and drove out. Uh, Edom was known for its wisdom. And so Job and his three friends are all probably living in that area. Of course, again, this is before it's called Edom. 
And so they would be known for their wisdom. Uh, and Job apparently was one of the wise men. Now, themes in the book of Job, I think one of the themes is the sovereignty of God. Yeah, and we see this theme beginning with God's dialogue with Satan and what Satan says about him, but also in his interaction with Job when he finally meets him. And in the end, you see this. So that's one. And of course, the, the other dominant theme is the suffering of the righteous. That's the question, why do the righteous suffer? Now, a theodicy and this form of wisdom literature deals with these answers not directly, but indirectly through the dialogue, through the issues. You're supposed to figure out the point of the book by looking at the circumstances. It, it, it requires literary analysis in that sense. And, um, uh, and it doesn't just come out and say, this is the point of this book. It's designed. It, and, and the book of Proverbs tells us that that's the nature of wisdom literature is that it operates in enigmas. It wants you to have to think about it and figure it out. And that's the way God likes to operate. You know, for us to grow and become wise is not an easy thing. Uh, and Jesus, when he taught, he taught sometimes enigmatically because he wanted people to think about it. And I think a lot of the stuff in Scripture is by God's design not as straightforward as we would like it because he wants us to sit around and think about it and try to figure it out. In fact, I, I, you know, I was wondering, does he delight in our theological debates? He may. He may delight in the fact that we're trying to figure him out. And he's revealed just enough to tickle our interest, but not enough to give us all the answers. And he wants us to struggle with that. I mean, Jesus, I see him many times saying things to his disciples that was by its very design a double entendre. And they even reached the point where they started, you know, on the, at, at, you know, the last night, before his crucifixion, they start biting the bait and they ask questions. And he still doesn't always give them straight answers, even when they think they're getting a straight answer. Because he wants them to really muse on it, think about it, figure it out. And he likes us to think. And so, as wisdom literature, Job is designed that way. Through, that through the dialogue, you get the point being made. Well, the message of Job, I think, is this. That the suffering of the righteous is permitted by the Lord for his own purposes. That's all Job says. Now, if you synthesize it down, basically, sometimes the righteous do suffer because God wants them to. Now, sometimes we are going to have to suffer. And some of it is just a natural part of being on planet Earth because of Adam's sin. We're all going to get old, we're going to get sick, and we're going to die. My, you know, half my body aches at one mo moment or, 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 or the other. You know, and, uh, and some of the aches is because of my home building and some of the aches is just because I'm old and I'm breaking down. And, uh, you know, that's just it. We get diseases. Right now my wife is home sick, having muscle spasms in her back and a cold and, you know, everything you can, can, can have to make your life miserable, she's experiencing it this week. And uh, no reason why other than she's been around people and someone coughed on her. But uh, there are times, though, when, when God does put us through very harsh circumstances that are difficult to live through. And it's not because he's cursing us, but it may be because he's disciplining us. Or it may be because he's testing us. Or he's making us strong in an area, or he's making us weak in an area where we were strong. Uh, you know, some of you know my story that when I went to seminary, I got sick, got an intestinal parasite, and was sick for three years. And I was serving the Lord. I gave up an army career. I was being obedient, and then I ended up sick for three years. Even to the point where I was so sick, I nearly died at one point. I mean, I was like, they estimate about 10 minutes away from being dead because of the reaction to medication. In fact, a good friend of mine walked into his room to tell him I didn't feel good, went stiff and fell over with a seizure. Scared him half to death. And uh, 
if I hadn't walked in his room, I would have died. You know, it's as simple as that. Uh, but yet, uh, you look at it, and there was sin that needed to be dealt with. There was a certain amount of pride and a certain amount of self-confidence that God had to take away from me. And by the time he was done with me, he, he robbed me of a lot of my self-confidence to where now, just to teach, I have to depend on him. Uh, and it's, it's changed the way that I approach my ministry and I, and I see myself. But it also has changed the way that I see sick people. Yeah. I feel perfectly comfortable going to the hospital and sitting next to someone who I know is dying. Because I've been told by a doctor, you know, you're sick and your condition will never get better. You just get used to it. And I know what it's like for someone to be told, you know, you're terminally ill and you're never going to feel better than today. Than, than, than today. Uh, so God used those things to really shake me. And it was all under his sovereign control. But at the time I was going through it, I was clueless as to why. Now looking back, 20 years later, I can see why. But at the time, I couldn't. And so that is the nature of God's sovereign control in the suffering of the righteous. And, of course, sometimes, though, we do suffer because of sin. And sometimes we suffer just simply because we're there. You know, some of the Christians who died in 9-11, it was just simply because they were there. Now, others, God worked circumstances that they didn't happen to go to work that day, and they were spared in his sovereign choices. But some weren't spirit. Yeah, and, it, and it was by his design. So are we supposed to look at suffering from a Christian worldview as always being either discipline or testing? No. Or are we just supposed to look at it knowing that when we go through the suffering, God will use that in some ways to discipline or teach us? Uh, no, it's even, I, I, I think it's different.